Mirrors. They flip us left to right, but not up to down. In a mirror, the only place you can kiss yourself is on the lips, and of course, they shiny. Humans have been looking at themselves in mirrors for centuries. Today, we've even developed cameras and other devices that only show us how we look in the mirror. It's our preferred depiction of ourselves as we are, or at least as we were. Now entering the facility. No, I said the sulfuric acid goes to the bioscience division, not advanced weapons. Vi oh, welcome. What's so useful about a simple mirror is that it can give you information about yourself or about what something looks like in real time. No waiting for information to process through circuits, no waiting for film to develop, just instantaneous checking the light that is bouncing off of your body and being reflected in the mirror. But in the right circumstances, these appearances can be deceiving. I said bioscience is Kevin! Imagine that you're standing in front of your bathroom mirror in the morning, maybe just a meter away from it, wondering what you're doing with your life and where your life is going. Aria, how long does it take light to travel one meter? Light travels one meter in 3.336 nanoseconds. Hello, by the way. Sorry. Hello, Aria. Thank you. Light. That radiation that frustratingly acts as both a particle and a wave always takes some amount of time to travel. And so everything you've ever seen, the reflected light off of objects, is necessarily on a delay. And this delay gets even bigger when you factor in how long it takes the average human brain to process visual information. I hate to break it to you, but everything you've ever seen has been in the past. You've never seen the present. In something like a bathroom mirror, you're not seeing yourself as you are, but as you were. You live in the past. Weird, I know. Ooh, it's moment of science time. Mirrors follow the law of reflection. That is to say that there's an angle that light comes in at, and then it bounces off at that same angle angle. Now this sounds pretty intuitive, but we weren't sure why this was exactly the case until a brilliant physicist named Richard Feynman figured out that a photon doesn't take this simple path. In fact, it takes an infinite number of paths to and from a mirror, some to the edge of the universe and back, some backwards in time. <gasps> but most of these weird wild paths cancel each other out with destructive interference, and so we end up with the simple law of reflection. Sometimes reality isn't always what you see in the mirror. Light is the fastest of fast. In a vacuum with nothing getting in its way, it will travel 300,000 kilometers in a single second. That's so fast that most humans will never ever notice the difference between past and present in their day-to-day -day life. But somewhere where you will notice it is in space. Space is gargantuan, enormous infinite, maybe. Space is so big that the difference between past and perceived present in terms of light can be many years. For example, if an alien living away from Earth, let's say 100 light years away, pointed a radio dish at the planet and tried to listen, what it would hear is not Billie Eilish on the radio, our present. It would be more like, hey there, Barnabas, how about them roaring 20s? Isn't it cool that radio waves are going into space now? World War I was pretty bad. I don't know how they sound. If some alien civilization was living far enough away, they could in theory see the Earth's present as when the dinosaurs were still walking around. But forget about aliens looking at Earth in the past that are definitely not behind that restricted access door. They're not, forget about it. Why should aliens have all the fun looking into Earth's past? Maybe you could do something similar with a space mirror. If a handheld mirror could in theory show you what you looked like nanoseconds ago, then wouldn't a space mirror pushed far enough away be able to show you what you may have looked like weeks ago or years? Hmm. Think about a mirror, a light year away, way off in space, 9.5 quadrillion meters away. Now look into that mirror. Light bouncing off of Earth, what we would see of Earth, is shot back into the vacuum of space. It leaves in, say, the year 2020. After that light year of travel, it encounters our space mirror, and it rebounds again. After another year, the light has returned to Earth, but two years have passed. Anyone looking at this light in the year 2022, therefore, would see the Earth as it was two years in the past. Yes, 
This is a theoretical optical time machine, and you'd be able to see much further back than just two years. Just push the space mirror further away, many more light years away, and see way back into the past. Well, maybe not that far back. I know this sounds all very science fiction, but it's all allowed by the laws of physics. Astronomy is all about looking deep into the past. Many of those stars that you see in the beautiful nighttime sky could be long dead by the time their light makes its way to Earth. Many of them could have gone supernova 100 million years ago. But even though these stars might in fact be gone in their present, their photonic ghosts can still teach us quite a lot, like how big the stars were, what they were fusing in their burning cores, and if they had planets around them. Now I haven't done the math on this, but it's hard to see stuff that's very far away. And that's because with enough distance, two distinct points of light, two different details on an object can start to run together and become indistinguishable from each other. This is a problem even for the Hubble telescope, which has taken some incredible images of the furthest reaches of our universe. And yet, if you pointed it at the moon, it would only be able to resolve objects that are larger than 280 feet. This is even bigger of a problem for our space mirror. If this was light years away, you'd imagine that we'd need either a really, really big telescope or a really big space mirror. And it would have to be really, 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 they get it. really big. Here's why. Put yourself at the pointy end of this triangle and think about looking out at some distant object in outer space. To resolve small details on that object, your resolution angle here, a property of your seeing device, like an eye or a telescope, has to be small enough to actually see it. If this angle is too large, you lose all the detail. So a space mirror, one light year away. We can now use trigonometry to tell us the required resolution angle to at least see a blurry version of a giant object in space, like a space mirror. Aria. What is the tangent of the diameter of Earth, a really big space mirror, and one light year? 0 0.00000077 degrees, or 0 0.00028 arc seconds. Wow, okay, so the resolution angle of the Hubble telescope is just 0.1 arc seconds, which means it's not even close to this precise. Our space mirror is gonna have to be immense to be effective, much, much larger than the Earth itself. So let's try this math again. The minimum size a space mirror would have to be to see it one light year away from Earth with something like the Hubble telescope and its resolution, which I think is reasonable, would be, oh, you know, just four and a half billion meters wide. For even a blurry glimpse of the past using something like a space mirror, you would need an apparatus that was over three times wider than the sun. Just think of how much material you would need to make something like this. All the rockets, you need to push it a light year away. How long that would take. Just think of the polishing budget. Everything about this screams There's ridiculous. There's a containment breach in Lab 7. Lab 7. Lab 7 houses the... Uh, I, I gotta go take care of something right back. If you want to reflect something accurately, the mirror needs to be the right shape. That's why you want your bathroom mirror to be nice and flat to reflect you as you think you are, and why you want a funhouse mirror to be all bent to make a fun, just a hilarious looking version of yourself. You might think that that to see something light years away in outer space, you would want an extremely precise mirror, and you do. At the time it was crafted, the mirror inside the Hubble telescope was the most smooth and precise mirror ever. Smooth down to just 10 billionths of a meter, meaning that if you enlarge the Hubble telescope's mirror up to the size of the entire planet Earth, you wouldn't find a bump on this mirror higher than six inches. Now that's precision. 
it's fine, they're not even that venomous. There would be other problems with a space mirror time machine too. It would be hard to just observe it with other astronomical bodies occasionally getting in the way like the sun and other planets, there'd be gravitational lensing issues, and because of the way this kind of time machine works, you wouldn't be able to see any further back in the past than when the space mirror was first launched. That's just how the light travels. And if you were getting that light at all, it would probably be a very weak and hard to piece together image. I mean, astronomers on Earth fire high-powered lasers at the moon, and they only get a few photons back. It wouldn't exactly make for an HD image. What was that? They're not that venomous. If you really wanted to see images of the Earth at a later date, you could just put cameras around the Earth and watch it back later, but where's the fun in that? Because theoretically, with unlimited time and resources, you could build a mirror bigger than stars and push it out light years away into the universe and show a future humanity what it looked like many years in the past. At 50 light years away, what would they see? At 100 light years away, would it end up reflecting on humanity favorably? What do you really want to see? And what would you see when you reflect? Until next time. Now will someone get me an update on the snake to pusses, please? They're very dangerous. Now exiting the facility. Thank you very much to the very nerdy faculty here at the facility for helping to produce this video. If you want to become part of the faculty, have your name here, have me shout it out and chat with us, have members only live streams, behind the scenes footage, videos a day early, you can join our Patreon too with the link in the description. You will want to do that because we're doing science today for a nerdier tomorrow.